everybody. Hi, yeah, welcome to yet another episode of uh, Free Stuff. Today we'll be talking about OTP. It's a topic suggested by a very close friend of mine, Bala. Uh, thanks for suggesting this topic. So to get on with it, OTP. What is ODP? A lot of people talk about it and we all know it's a one-time password or a one-time PIN. And as the name suggests, it is just for one-time usage or a one-session usage. You cannot reuse this PIN or a password, right? What is the benefit uh, after using OTP or registering to a service which requires ODP? It gives you an additional uh, layer of security. It gives uh, its implementation gives you uh, benefit over the traditional static username and password, right? So that's why uh, in today's world every service uh, needs OTP. Uh, no matter what you're trying to access. If you're trying to register to a website, create an email address, uh, do an online banking uh, or a credit card transfer, whatever it is, uh, it requires you to type in your OTP. And uh, in general, what we see the OTP is sent to your mobile phone. I don't, don't have the mobile phone right now, but in general, we get the uh, OTP as in a SMS to our cell phone. However, there are other mechanism of delivery as well, such as uh, we have something called as an OTP uh, device. Uh, th it'll be a tiny device with an LCD panel to it, and you'll have the number coming uh, on it, and you can use that device to key in the, uh, it'll give you the OTP, and then you can use that OTP in the uh, portal. And that device generally use a, uses a time-synchronized algorithm. So there are other mechanisms as I was talking, you can get your OTP on your email as well. And there are times when you get OTP on a phone call also. So there are various type of delivery mechanism uh, which are available for uh, delivering OTP, right? Uh, but there is something very important that this OTP, this hexadecimal or uh, digital or, 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 or numbers that we get as OTP is unique. Uh, it, 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 can, it does not repeat itself and it is unguessable, right? We cannot guess it. What is the OTP I'm going to get next or anybody looking into uh, trying to crack or hack into my account will not be able to guess the next OTP, right? As well as even though if there are any key loggers uh, installed on your machine or if there is a key logger attached to your machine trying to capture the traps from your keyboard, uh, they will get the OTP that you type it in, but they, that will be useless because it's not going to be used for the next session or for the next login. So that's why uh, OTP gives us uh, good security for our accounts uh, on the World Wide Web. So it's good to have. Uh, now, let's look at how it is implemented in the background. So we all know what happens when we interact to a website, right? We enter our credentials or with the registered phone number or email address, the vendor would send that OTP to us. Uh, there are a lot of vendors who will not even require uh, us to type in the credential. They'll just give an op option to enter the phone number. You put in the phone number and then they send you the uh, OTP, which you type in and you just get access to the portal that you're trying to log in. Uh, you can see this happening for uh, your Aadhaar downloads. If you want to download your Aadhaar card from website, PF uh, details if you want to access. Uh, it also happens for your uh, tax filing. So any website that you go for, uh, if you're making an uh, online transaction, uh, I mean, and you're trying to buy something using a credit card, you have to put it on OTP and it comes to your phone number, right? So a huge usage of it in today's world. Let's look at it in the animation board as to how it works in the background. Today, users can access resources from an array of devices, handheld devices, and the resources are available on World Wide Web. These resources could be behind two-step login, or it could be behind an authentication of OTP. When a user tries to access such an information, the request is transferred to a OTP server. The server uh, could be within the uh, vendor's 
domain a data center or it could be a service that they have registered to so when the OTP server receives this information it then runs a function which is sudo random and it generates a pin or a OTP the function could be running any one of the algorithm uh, which is based off time synchronized or mathematical algorithm or a mathematical challenge algorithm once the OTP is generated then the uh, server has to decide the delivery mechanism for the user so this uh, vendor needs to be subscribed to one particular service either email or bulk SMS or phone call or all of them so once uh, the method is decided the <coughs> uh, OTP is then sent back to the user when the user receives this OTP they are going to enter this within the given space and then it is sent back to the OTP server okay once the OTP server receives the code the OTP then it authenticates against the generated OTP and it's going to match once it matches the user receives or gets access to the resource they were trying to and that's how OTP functions thank you Thank you.